Chapter 13, The Hungry Games. Cute. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. When I get to the field that day, it's almost a collective sigh of relief when all of the section leaders reunite. Thank goodness. Standing here in daylight, it almost seems like what happened ten hours ago was a mere dream. Our relief is short-lived when Mr. Wiley soon appears and launches a long-winded basic session. When he's nearby, the air feels a little bit harder to breathe. Wherever he goes, tension follows. All right. Great basic session! Grab a water and let's set up the closer! For whatever reason, he doesn't bring up the topic of what happened last night in the woods. Fine by me. On the sidelines, I approach Tom and Peter. Between sips of water, I quickly relay the plan. Samuel and I are going to check out the radio tower today. We'll let you know if... Whoa! Whoa! Why are you all sitting down? Uh, because you gave us a water break? I said grab a water. Grab a water and bring it on the field with you so we don't have to waste time on breaks today. There is too much to do. Groaning and dragging our feet, we get back to work. At least the weather is bearable, but two straight weeks of camp has left us with extremely sore muscles to contend with. There is an audible crack from my bones when I raise my arms to conduct. I tell myself that by the end of today, if we manage to solve the mystery of the missing signal, I'll be able to hear my mom's voice again and she'll be coming to pick me up. The cafeteria feels stuffy today, so we eat outside and enjoy the breeze, but everyone is too tired to speak much. So when are you two venturing to the radio tower? Pay attention. Keep it down. I saw Mr. Wiley at the buffet. He's still hanging around? We'll head over when practice is over and Mr. Wiley is tucked away in his cottage. When we know for sure he won't catch us. Maybe you should enlist in some spies. Who wants to be a spy? Oh! Sounds fun! We can keep an eye on Mr. Wiley and let you know when the coast is clear. Just go tonight when you know he's asleep. That would be... Uh... He trails off, staring at something over my shoulder. Crap! Is it Mr. Wiley? I roll around in my seat. Oh, phew. It's just Doug. Did he hear our conversation? If he did, he doesn't mention it. He's too bu busy staring intently at Peter. Is there something on my face? Doug's eyes flicker to Sabrina and back to Peter. He's like, you don't look like Felicity. So, you two are dating now, huh? Yep. Bit slow on the uptake, aren't you? We only started dating a few days ago, Peter. Treat her right, man! Huh? Excuse me. Oh, of course Doug is, like, protective of her, because he dated Marion, and he probably viewed Sabrina as, like, a sister. <laughs> Aw, that's very sweet, Doug. Oh, or have you confused Sabrina for Marion? Oh, no. Well, it's still very sweet. If I had a chance to do it all over again, I'd make sure to treat her better. I would work hard not to piss her off so much and be the kind of boyfriend she deserves. So be good to her, Parker. You dated Sabrina? Who's Sabrina? I'm Sabrina. My bad. What? Oh! My bad. I was wondering why you weren't wearing your glasses. Doug wanders away, leaving everyone confused. In the corner of my eye, I notice movement. Marion is sitting unnoticed in the shade of a nearby tree, eyes impossibly wide. Oh, did you overhear that, Marion? That was weird. Jeez. Can you believe him? Who's Sabrina? The nerve. Sabrina, explain that- or did you not know that he was dating your sister? After lunch are the mandatory sectionals Mr. Wiley prescribed. As usual, my duty is to make my rounds and check that everyone is doing what's expected of them. Are we still doing section songs? Huh? Oh, I had completely forgotten about that. But we put so much work into them! Chill. Calm down, Alex. We'll do a quick run of our song to keep it fresh. But once that's done, we should work on the show music. Samuel's right. We've got to focus on making the show the best it can be, remember? Alex glares at the ground. Ugh. 
I'm sick of the show. I'm sick of marching band. Join the club, kid. Ah, <laughs> oh, Cadence! There you are. I didn't see you while I was making my rounds. You were making rounds too? Yep, I have an announcement to make. I need everyone in the band room for it. And what is this announcement? He waggles a finger teasingly. <laughs> Patience, Cadence. You'll find out when everyone else does. Now I'm starting to think Mr. Wiley is bipolar. Before I was trying so hard to pull him out of his depression, hating to see him like that. Now I think I'd prefer that to this maniacally happy Mr. Wiley that pretends everything is fantastic. Not wanting to be near him, I hide in the girls' bathroom until it's time for the announcement. I'm among the last to enter the room. Is everyone here? Even the pit? Yes, we're all here, Mr. Wiley. I have an announcement to make. Excellent. This evening, we will be holding a special event to unify the band and build morale. This event will be... Oh, right, it's a different event every time. A cooking competition! Ah, because of Samuel, gotcha. I want everyone to pair off into teams of two. Then use your creativity and what ingredients you have in your rooms to construct a meal. Tonight we'll hold a big feast of what you've concocted. Doesn't that sound fun? I'm calling it the Hungry Games! You're going down! Yes! I always had an arena plan in case I was ever reaped. My time to shine! Thomas. Hungry Games, Tom, not Hunger Games. As much as I might want to, forcing you kids to fight to the death would be illegal. Ah, but holding them hostage is not. Got it. Any other time, I'm sure the band would have been thrilled to have this special event. That is, if it hadn't been after weeks of hard work and it hadn't been a cooking competition. <laughs> but all I have in my room is Pop-Tarts. Can we use the kitchens? <laughs> no. The warden wouldn't like a bunch of kids trashing his kitchen. Make do with what you have. But how are we supposed to... Yeah, yeah. I know, I know, you're tired. So go get some rest and grab an early dinner. I'll see you outside the commons in an hour. Oh. And this event is mandatory. See you soon. I instantly head to my friends. That's crazy. How are we supposed to make anything decent without proper ingredients or access to a kitchen? Hmm. What are you thinking, Samuel? What a surprise. Doesn't it feel like this is Mr. Wiley's way of distracting us from getting anything done? Dividing us up like this? Giving us a job to do while he keeps an eye on us? That crossed my mind too, but he can't watch us 24-7. The radio tower isn't going anywhere, so let's do as he says for now. During dinner, everyone in band works on partnering up. I sit next to Samuel and eat quietly, listening to the teams forming around me. I can't believe Eugene already partnered up with Barry. He didn't even ask me! <laughs> Susie. It's okay. You and I are going to kill it. You're going down! Peter and I are going to kill it too, but not in the good kind of way. Hey. Yo, Cadence! Wanna be my partner? Well, you know what? <laughs> no. I drop my spoon into my cookie dough ice cream, surprised by Alex's sudden proposal. Nah. She's already with me. Thank you. <laughs> Figures. I smile to myself. Samuel and I hadn't even discussed it, but somehow the fact that we were partners went unspoken between us. Yay. I pop another spoonful of ice cream into my mouth and it tastes even sweeter than before. Can we form a group of three? I think everyone's already paired off. Uh... You don't have a partner, Alex? Neither do I. Wanna be partners? Thank goodness for Pop-Tart! No! What? Gross! Alex, partner up with him. Your section leader commands you. Ugh! Fine! Keep him out of trouble, Pop-Tart. Yes, sir. Good old Pop-Tart. It's been almost an hour. We should finish up. Where did Mr. Wiley say to meet him? Outside the commons. 
When we step outside, we spot Mr. Wiley setting up tables for the banquet and covering each one with a tablecloth. Lazy band students stand back and watch him work. Sir. Mr. Wiley, do you need help with that? Clark. I've got it. Let go. Clark backs off and stands next to Olive. Oh, are they partnered up? That's an interesting duo. I, it's one I've not considered before, but it is an interesting duo. Olive's eyes shift in our direction, scrutinizing us. Hmm. Are you two a couple? No! Hmm. I mean, yes, we're partners. You might as well give up. Ha! Huh. Clark and I have got this in the bag. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. Get ready to taste defeat, Cadence. Really? Don't get too confident. I know a thing or two about cooking. So do I! My dad's a baker! Well, good luck with that, considering we're not allowed to use an oven. <laughs> Olive snickers, jabbing Clark with a finger to get him to join in. He wiggles out of her reach with a grimace. <sighs> Don't touch me! <laughs> You're no fun. I roll my eyes. Behind me, I hear whispering. Oh, are the sisters pairing up? How fun. Listen to those fools. They're never going to see us coming. <laughs> All right. Everyone here, gather around with your partners. We do so, intent on hearing what he has to say. Let's see. It's 4.30 p.m. right now. At 8 p.m., I want you all back here with your dishes ready for taste testing and the banquet. Use the time allotted to figure out which dish you want to make, find ingredients, and make your meal. What if we don't have ingredients? As I said before, no taking from the warden store in the kitchen. Instead, I encourage you to trade amongst yourselves. This will build band bonding and teach you how to compromise. Yeah! This is a great learning opportunity. It sounds like he's trying to convince himself as much as he's trying to convince us. What do we get if we win? The feeling that you succeeded and the admiration of your... Uh, everyone groans. Fine, fine. How about... Winners can sit out of Monday's Basics Block session. Happy now? The groaning subsides. Yeesh, what a bunch of whiners. If there are no other questions, let's get started. Remember to do your best and have fun! The Hungry Games begins... now! He bangs a gong that I hadn't noticed before. Whoa. A couple of gung-ho students take off running, realize they don't have a destination in mind, and double back. I turn to Samuel, who turns to me expectantly in the same instant. The glasses are off, he's taking it serious. Where should we go first? Hmm... I don't have many good snacks in my room. I might have something we can work with. While I grab it, why don't you head to the cafeteria and see if there's anything there? But Mr. Wiley said we can't use what's in the kitchen. Doesn't matter. True. But what about the food left out in the buffet? Oh! Good thinking! Need you back here in ten minutes. Hello? When I get there, I spot Clark and Olive sniffing around the buffet. Clearly, they had the same idea. I'd better be quick about it. I wander off the buffet tables, looking for something we can use, but most of it has already been cooked. An icky-looking sheen is beginning to settle on the lukewarm food. Nothing sticks out to me as a usable ingredient. Maybe we can use the soft-serve ice cream? Oh! At the end of the line, by the stale bagels that were set out this morning, a block of unopened cream cheese is sitting in a cooler. I sidle over and snatch it up before Clark or Olive can steal it. You got the cream cheese! Made from the most popular cow in the herd! I see them eyeing me from afar, but I tuck the cream cheese behind my back, hiding it from view. It's still cold. We can definitely use this. I slip out of the cafeteria and jog back to our meeting place. Score! I get there first, but Samuel appears within two minutes, holding a bag of something green. What are those? Jalapeno peppers from my mom's garden. You brought jalapenos to band camp? 
For a snack? Mm-hmm. Yup. I love munching on these babies. The hotter the better. And they go great in anything, particularly grilled cheese. Ooh, I want to try that. My eyes water at the thought. Nevertheless, this is a fantastic ingredient to have on our side. You got the jalapenos! Fresh ingredients straight from the garden of Mrs. Robinson. Did you find anything? Yes! Check it out! I present my cream cheese to him proudly. His eyes light up. Nice one. This is excellent, Cadence. Cream cheese and jalapenos can be put together to make pepper poppers. Well done. Same to you, Samuel. I feel like we need one more topping, though. Hmm. Might as well check what I have in my room. Maybe there's something there we can use. The door is open when we get there. Susie and Felicity are, are already inside, sorting through the snacks Susie brought with her to Camp Bearpaw. Susie looks to be deep in thought. Um... If we put my chocolate pudding in cookies with your gummy worms, we could make dirt pudding. It's a good idea. I peek into my store of food, but nothing jumps out as being useful and my heart falls. Why didn't I think to bring bacon with me to band camp? That would have been perfect. Though truthfully, if I had brought bacon with me to camp, I probably would have eaten it all by now. Hey! Hey, you two! Having any luck? So far, so good. We show them our jalapenos and cream cheese. Whoa, jalapenos! Would you like to trade for our chocolate cream filled cookies? She thrusts the box at me, eyes shining with hope. Oh. I don't know. What do you think, Samuel? It's your call, Cadence. Those cookies would pair with the cream cheese just as well as the jalapenos. We can work with either. Okay, so it's up to me. Aw, oh, I want to help Susie, but... Do I help Susie? Do I not help Susie? These are his mom's jalapenos! <laughs> Does it even matter? Ugh. What would we- we need to get like some kind of meat otherwise, right? What's the chances of us getting meat in a place like this? Oh, what does Doug have in his room? I'm <laughs> trying to remember. Yo, Doug, what do you got in your room? He's got- Doug's got a lot of drinks. Um... I think he had, like, some cheesies and... I'm trying to remember if he had, like, some kind of meat and I can't remember now. Susie, I'm going to extend an olive branch <laughs> because we haven't fought the entire route and this is the longest we've ever gone. So please accept these jalapenos <laughs> and don't stab me in the back or I'll be so sad later. If it's okay with you, I'd love to take the cookies. If we could find some white chocolate chips, we'd have the three ingredients we need to make cookie balls. Great! Thanks, Cadence! Samuel hands her the bag of jalapenos, and I take the package of chocolate cookies. You got the chocolate cookies! The creamy center is fun to lick, but it's best to resist doing that in public. Susie! What about the dirt pudding? This will be much better. We can make some kind of spicy salsa instead and pair it with my chips. Okay, that sounds yummy. As we step outside, I feel my heart fall a little. Why are you frowning? I just gave away your mom's jalapenos for cookies. Trust me, it's not a big deal. We always grow more jalapenos than we know what to do with. And I'll still get to eat them if Susie makes that spicy salsa. You're a good guy, Samuel. You're sure it's okay? Mm-hmm. Positive. He touches my arm briefly and my uncertainty melts away. No. Where to next? Um, no idea. Get back here, you bad girl! What the? Bandit, what are you doing again? Mr. Wiley suddenly comes charging by, hot on the ringed tail of his pet raccoon. 
Something flashes silver in Bandit's jaws. Mr. Wiley makes a dramatic dive for it and t tears his whistle out of her teeth. Ah. <laughs> he puts it back in its rightful place, panting and glaring down at Bandit, who glowers back indignantly. Bad raccoon! Bad! No more treats for you! He sh shakes a bag of marshmallows in her face. Bandit immediately changes her tune, balancing on her hind legs and pawing at Mr. Wiley's shorts, her ears pricked, her eyes round with pleading. No! Bad raccoons don't get treats! Bandit brings her paws together and makes a begging motion. It's so cute! A small aww slips past my lips. Mr. Wiley gives a start, having only just noticed us standing there. Cadence, good timing. Will you take these and use them in your dish? Don't worry, they're not opened. Uh, huh. He passes me the bag of marshmallows. Bandit makes a little leap as if to grab them, but her claws only scrape the bag uselessly. Uh, you sure about this? Bandit reaches up and grips my shorts in her paws almost desperately. Don't give her any, no matter how nicely she asks you. She doesn't deserve any. I try to step away, but Bandit continues to cling to me like her last lifeline. I can practically hear her pleading, Oh please, oh please, can't you spare a single marshmallow? I haven't eaten in weeks! Come on now! Let her go, Bandit! We're going back to the cottage. Oh dear. He scoops up the raccoon and drags her away from me as she spits a protest. I sigh in relief once they're gone. You got the marshmallows! A sweet treat that has been confiscated from a misbehaving raccoon and can be used in a variety of desserts! Cool. A free ingredient. We can work with this. Yeah, too bad Bandit's favorite snack isn't white chocolate chips. That would have been better. Hmm. You know what? I might know somewhere we can find white chocolate chips. Really? Come on. Samuel leads me around to the other side of the building. It doesn't take me long to realize we're headed for his room. You have white chocolate? Nope. My roommate. He throws open the door. I knew Doug was going to come in clutch. Doug! Hey! What up? I look past him to see a mountain of food piled on his bed. Marion and Sabrina are already there, perusing Doug's goods while Aaron watches them like a hawk. Wow, look at all of this! I step over a pair of crumpled pineapple boxes, boxers and make my way to Doug's bed, marveling at his wares. Countless jars of salsa, bottles of maple syrup, a tower of shredded cheese packets, and more energy drinks in one place than I've ever seen in my life. Don't get too excited. We'll only trade if you have something good to give us in return. Listen. Doug, I've seen you eating chocolate chips. Do you... Oh, yeah. I love chocolate chips. Do you happen to have any white chocolate chips? I do. Doug reaches into the heart of the massive pile and pulls out half a bag of white chocolate chips, twisted shut with a clothespin. You're in luck. These are my last ones. Then give them to us. Oh. We need them for the lasagna we're making. Chocolate chips? Are you making a lasagna dessert? You're making lasagna with white chocolate in it. Mm-hmm. Pop-tart lasagna. Oh, that actually sounds amazing. I see. I'm not going to touch a single food item at this banquet. Not so fast. We were here first. Technically, we were here first. Yet I see nothing but junk food and disappointment. Let's go, Brina. Thanks anyway, Doug. You're welcome. Sorry I couldn't help. You can still help us. I reach for the bag of chocolate chips, but Aaron immediately blocks me. I said, come back when you have something good to trade. We have marshmallows. I'm not interested. I don't like marshmallows. Now please, you're wasting our time. How about... I sift through my bag. You can have this Pop-Tart! He ushers the four of us out of the room and closes the door in our face. Rude. <laughs> Gah! How 
rude. How did the two of you know Doug had white chocolate chips? Be careful what you say. You never know who's listening. Pop tart. Weirdo. Stop being a creep, Pop. We've got business to conduct. Did you say you have marshmallows? We do. Alex and Pop Tart exchange a thrilled glance. That would be perfect! Even better than the white chocolate! We could toast them on top of the lasagna! Hold up! We want the marshmallows! Shut up! Back off! No, you back off! Marion looms over Alex, glaring down at him with eyes like lasers. Alex shrinks away. Hey, there's no need for that, Mari! Yeah. Let Cadence and Samuel decide who to give the marshmallows to. We'll give you this bottle of raspberry iced tea for them. We were going to trade it to Doug, but he didn't have anything we wanted. We'll give you, um, um, this jar of peanut butter! Take the iced tea. Doug loves iced tea. Yeah, well I doubt Aaron does, and he's obviously the one in control! Take my peanut butter! I choose... I mean, Marion does know what Doug likes. It's true. Alex is just kind of grasping. I do love Pop-Tart, but I gotta go with Mar Marion's expertise here. So I will take your iced tea, because I can't do anything with the marshmallows anyway. Good choice. You got the raspberry iced tea! Doug's infamous form of fuel for marching band. Not fair! Thanks for nothing. Yay! Let's make s'mores, Mari! Ooh, ooh, or Rice Krispie Treats! The girls leave with a smile on their face while the boys drag their feet back to their room. Sorry, guys. Back to Doug! We brought you an offering. It better be good. I hold out the bottle of iced tea. Deal! Dang. Next thing I know, the iced tea is taken from me and the bag of white chocolate chips lands in my hands with a loud whap. Hold it! Doug, you have gallons of the stuff! Why would you trade for it? I only have lemon flavored, not raspberry! Oh, this sucks. We're supposed to be partners! I didn't agree to this! <laughs> Samuel tugs my arm lightly and we sneak out of the room before the two of them can change their minds. <laughs> Good old Marion. We head to the cafeteria to concoct our masterpiece. Don't forget to wash your hands. I would never forget. Crap, I'm glad he reminded me. I'll let you take the lead on this. How do we make the cookie balls? Just follow my lead. Together we crush up the chocolate cookies, then mix them in a bowl with the cream cheese. Once the two ingredients are good and blended, we shape them into balls. After that, we head back to my room and stick our cookies in the mini fridge to harden up. Once they're cold enough, we'll spread the last ingredient on top. I'm looking forward to trying them. I sit on my bed to wait. Samuel sits next to me. Suddenly, I feel my heart rate picking up. I search desperately for something to talk about, but before I can get a word out, the door opens. Oh, Look at you two! Aww. Oops! We're not interrupting, are we? N not at all! We weren't doing anything! We're waiting for the balls to harden! Okay, then the phrasing! Both girls stare at me, and I resist from smacking a hand against my forehead. We made cookie balls. They're in the fridge. Susie and Felicity peek inside. Oh, yum! I love cookie balls! You're lucky you had Sammy on your team to help you, Cadence. Good thinking. Actually, Cadence took the lead on this. He looks at me proudly. Yay! I feel a blush rising in my cheeks as I puff out my chest importantly. Mm. I'll let you know if your balls are any good later. Felicity, please. Felicity winks at Samuel, but he gives no reaction. We continue to wait on our cookies, keeping one eye on the clock, but we're doing good on time. Susie and Felicity are making progress as well. We watch them argue over how to make the best salsa. Once we've had enough, we head to back to the cafeteria to finish our cookies. Now for our third ingredient. We melt the white chocolate in a dusty microwave, then put a dollop on each cookie. 
With the both of us working together, we're finished within minutes. Can I try one? Nope, it's gotta go back in the fridge. Dang. Don't worry, not much longer to wait. The sun eventually sets and 8 p.m. approaches. Samuel and I keep the cookies in the fridge until the last minute possible, then bring them to the banquet. By the time we get there, most of the band has already congregated and put their dishes on the tables. Some kids look sheepish, while others lift their chins proudly. I am among the latter, as I set the cookies down with a flourish. I wonder how many different ways this can end. Smooth. This actually looks a lot better than I thought it would. Some of this food actually looks edible. Right you are, Samuel! Cadence, will you come with me, please? What? Why me? You can be my fellow judge! You mean... I have to try all of this food? Yup. Too bad Garth isn't here. He would have made a good judge, too. Who should be our number three? I'll be a judge! Perfect! Thanks, Tom! I wish being a judge was optional. I steal my stomach as I'm faced with 20-some different dishes to sample. That one's mine! Tom proudly points out a pot of overcooked ramen noodles. Half-melted blobs of cheddar cheese bob in the greasy depths of his soupy concoction. Why, God! <laughs> it's Hamburger Helper! Sam's the hamburger. It's Helper! <laughs> Helping who? Mm. Help yourselves. You got this, Cadence. I believe in you. It was nice knowing you. You had better not be biased in your judgment. If you were worried about that, you should have volunteered, Clark. The band watches as Mr. Wiley, Tom, and I sample each dish. I take the tiniest bites possible of the more questionable-looking ones, screwing my face up against the taste. The band laughs each time, chattering excitedly amongst themselves. Okay, let's end the sampling with a taste of these cookies. He pops a chocolate cookie ball into his mouth, eating it whole. Holy smokes, that's good! Mmm. Tom reaches for another one, but Mr. Wiley slaps his hand away. Save some for everyone else, Tom! Kiddos, help yourselves to the banquet while the three of us figure out who won. Mr. Wiley pulls me and Tom away from the others. Okay, so here's what I think. He lists off the best dishes. I'm momentarily surprised by his choice, but then realize I have to agree with him. The winners are clear. Sounds good to me. Great! He straightens up and clears his throat. <clears throat> Listen up! The judges have made their decision. In third place, Clark and Olive with their tasty tuna melts. What? Third? <laughs> Well, at least we placed, I guess. In second place, Susie and Felicity with their spicy jalapeno salsa. Woohoo! I'm so glad that worked out. Yay! We did it! Love ya. Thanks again for the jalapeno peppers, Sammy! And in first place, with a score of 99.99, .99, Cadence and Samuel with their chocolate cookie balls. Really? We won. We did! Gripped by the moment, I throw myself at Samuel and hug him, jumping up and down as I do. Then I realize what I'm doing and immediately let go. Um, uh, good job! Nice one. Good job yourself. He pulls me back into the hug and gives me a small squeeze. I smile into his chest, hiding my blush in his shirt. Thou, so cute! As for the spectacularly worst dish of the night... Congratulations, Pop-Tart and Alex, on your Pop-Tart lasagna! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh -huh. Really? Ours didn't lose. Ugh! I told you it was a terrible idea, Pop-Tart! Bandit seems to like it. He points to where Bandit has climbed on the table, her snout buried deep in the lasagna. What? Bandit! Don't eat that, you'll get sick! Everyone chuckles as Mr. Wiley rushes to shoo Bandit away. She's covered in Pop-Tart jam, peanut butter, and who knows what else. And that concludes the Hungry Games! Thank you for participating! We all clap and cheer. 
Stuck in the moment, I almost forget that Mr. Wiley has trapped us here and is trying to distract us from that fact. Almost. The banquet stretches on until 10 p.m. when Mr. Wiley reminds everyone that curfew has arrived. Now, I know you have off tomorrow, but I want you to get plenty of rest so you're fresh for week three. Got it? Everyone nods. By the look on their faces, they're beginning to come back down to the reality of band camp, too. Have a good night! I'll walk you back. Thanks. I'm bushed. I make a big show of yawning, just in case Mr. Wiley is still lurking about. Ooh, good night, Samuel. See ya. Good night. He leans in close, lowering his voice to a whisper. Meet me by the electric fence at midnight. A thrill runs through me. We're still doing this. Wide-eyed and breathless, I merely nod. Samuel pulls away and departs into the darkness.